Thanks, Senator Kraft. Senator Warner of Virginia is recognized. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good to see you, Secretary Yellen, and congratula congratulations, Chair Powell, on your, your reappointment. I want to start with you, Chair Powell. I mean, I actually think the Fed's activities, um, particularly during the pandemic, which included both extensive use of 13 3 facilities and uh, some aggressive bond purchases actually helped stave off what could have been a complete economic meltdown. And while we did spend in excess of $5 trillion, mostly all in an extraordinarily bipartisan way under both President Trump and President Biden on recovery from COVID, uh, I think history will treat those actions, certain areas excessive, uh, but I think net-net from a historical perspective, it'll be well-regarded uh, both for the American economy and for the world's economy. But I think, as you, as you've indicated, Chair Powell, um, you know, I think we're seeing our economy come back. Uh, we will differ on, on uh, the bipartisan infrastructure plan and maybe even the, a bit of the build back better, but um, that's part of our job. But I have seen since your FOMC's November meeting that the Fed signaled a shift announce, announcing starting to move back from some of the very aggressive means you've used and announcing a ta tapering on the pace of bond purchases month by month as the economy continues to strengthen. I'd like to you to get into that a little bit. Which factors most influence that decision for a gradual change in course, and how long do you think it'll take the Fed to gradually wind down these purchases? So we, we actually haven't made a decision on that, but, but I, I would just say this. The most recent data, particularly since <coughs> the um, November FOMC meeting show, elevated inflation pressures, a rapid improvement in many labor market indicators without an accompanying addition of, 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 of labor supply, and also strong spending that, that, that really signals uh, growth, big, significant growth in coming months. Remember that every dollar of asset purchases actually adds accommodation to the economy. But, but at this point, the economy is very strong and inflationary pressures are high, and, and the, it is therefore appropriate, in my view, to consider wrapping up the taper of our asset purchases, which we actually announced at the November meeting, perhaps a few months sooner. And I expect that we will discuss that at, at our upcoming meeting in a couple of weeks. Of course, between now and then, we will see another labor market report, another inflation report, and we'll also get a better sense of, of the, new, uh, the new COVID variant as well before, that, before we make that decision. Well, let, let me drill down on that a little bit. I mean, um, clearly, I think, I was surprised. You say you were surprised. I think most of us were surprised that coming back in September uh, that we didn't see more folks reenter the, um, the labor force. Uh, I believe that tapering and, frankly, accelerating it um, can kind of serve as an insurance policy. If, if we don't see this return and we see these potential over, overheating of the, um, of the economy. Um, so I do hope that you will move more aggressively on this tapering. Uh, I also would like to just touch again, you mentioned some of the new variants with COVID. Um, what factors, one of the things we've got to maintain is some ability to move quickly. And we obviously, Congress moved very quickly uh, under President Trump and Secretary Mnuchin um, with the outset of, of COVID. Hopefully we won't have to come back to those kind of actions from this entity. But with these new variants coming, coming on board, how will, what are the markers you're going to look at to determine uh, uh, how that might influence Fed activity? So at this point, I, I think we're all looking at the same thing, and we're listening to the experts, which, which are not, I'm certainly not one of those, but I talk to those people, and it's really about transmissibility. It's about the ability of the existing uh, vaccines to, to address a new, any new variant, and it's about the severity of the disease once it is contracted. And we, we don't know, I think we're going to know I'm, what I'm told by experts is it will know quite a bit about those answers within about a month. We'll know something, though, within a week or 10 days. And then, if, then, then and only then can we make an assessment of what the impact would be on the economy. As I pointed out in my testimony, for now, it's a risk. It's, it's, not, it's a risk to the baseline. It's not really baked into our forecast. Well, I'm down to my last 20-odd seconds. I'm not going to get away without at least raising an issue I always raise with Secretary Yellen, and I know Chairman Powell have raised with you as well. And that's, I think, the very smart action that took place, again, actually under President Trump, uh, on investment in CDFIs 
and minority depository institutions. And I want to thank Chairman Brown and people like Senator Crapo and so many others, including Secretary Mnuchin, that we made that investment. And you now, Secretary Yellen, are implementing that. We've seen a great take-up rate from the ESIT program in terms of tier one capital investment into these institutions that hit low and minor, low and moderate income individuals. I guess um, with this demand way exceeding um, the amount of money we had, what else can we do to shore up these institutions? And I would love to press both of you. Maybe you can take this partially for the record since I've gone over on how we might even be able to look at securitization of some of this CDFI debt so that we can, again, increase the liquidity of these institutions. But if you briefly, recognizing I've gone over, uh, answer that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, we would be glad to work with you to discuss possibilities there. Um, I, I think that the infusion of funds into CDFIs and MDIs, it's historic. It's going to make a tremendous difference to their ability to um, support businesses, uh, particularly in um, minority areas. Um, we've seen huge take-up of the um, ESIP uh, funds that have been provided. It's $4 billion oversubscribed. We're working through applications, and we'll try to make decisions on investments um, shortly, but it certainly shows that it's a program that has the potential to make an enormous difference to this lending. We would be happy to work with you to find ways to make it uh, yet more effective. I'm way over time. If you could just say yes, you'll work with me too, Chair Powell. That would be great. Yes, I'll work with you too. Senator Rounds from South Dakota is recognized for five